one. Hey, and look at that. Here we are on plot points, but I am not sitting in the DM seat. Hi, I'm That's... in the hot seat tonight. Okay. I will be DMing us through the hopefully good stream tonight. With me, I have two very lovely players, uh, Dan and Sean. Would you both like to introduce your characters? We can go Dan and then Sean. Just do like a one quick summation, like one sentence summation of your character. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Gaius is an incredibly plain person, uh, serving as a militia person inside of his town. It's a very small town. Brown hair, brown eyes, not very special. Perfect. And then, uh, so Sean is busy. I will do a quick summation of his character. Hi, he will be playing Rob tonight. Rob is just also a, you know, local, nobody important, just somebody making ends meet in the world. And then, hi, I am the DM for tonight, DM Kitty, and I will be bringing you through the world. So, mm. we are going to open up with Rob. That would be Sean's character. And he has been, he's been on the road for a while now. And he has just started to get to the town that he's been looking for, the town Somnum, which is not really full of life. It's kind of, I wouldn't say it's a dead town. It's just a small town. One might even call it Village S, where he is making his way in. And is there any thoughts that you have, Rob, as you're going in, or would you like me to just continue? You know, I've been walking along, and anybody looking at the screen can see that I'm kind of stinky and odiferous because I'm telling you, it's just like coming off my body. It's been three months trying to get down here to some nom 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 nom, and I'll tell you, I've had no nom noms along the way. I've been able to bum a couple rides. Uh, my clothes and whatnot, you know, are kind of weary worn, a little bit traveler worn. But there is a certain truth when I see some of the uh, individuals going by in their carts trying to catch a ride. But the problem is, when you're this stinky, they just don't want to let you ride for long. So I've, I'm really kind of hungry. Uh, I'm thin at the best of times, only about 175 at, at almost six foot. Or at least I like to say six foot. Technically, I come in a little under it. But yeah, I'm hungry. And now that I can see some num 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 in the distance, my tummy starts going. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we're here. And, and I... you know, you do pick up on the wind, the smell of some sort of smoked meat. You enter into the town. The town's main square is set up with a few tiny stands that are definitely selling some sort of meat if you would like to go over and purchase. There's a few people bustling about, you know, getting errands done and the like. But like I said, very small town. You enter this town square, there must be a total of 20 people total, including the people running the shops. I, uh,. Look up in the sky, I see my giant black bird flying around, and I um, put out an arm, and it comes and lands on my arm, and I give the, uh, it ah. looks, it's kind of like a peregrine hop, but it's all black, and uh, when the wings actually spread out, they, while they actually do have feathers, they tend to not, you don't see the feathers, the way this bird is designed, it actually looks more like, almost leathery, um, like, uh, one person described it as pterodactyl-like wings, and so that's just, ah. it is what it is. And the bird turns his head at me, and I'm like, yeah, we'll go get some food now, you know, and uh, I reach into my pocket, and, you know, hey, look, I got that coin still with me, so I'm pretty good. And I go over there um, to start bargaining with the vendor about getting some meat, and I decide, is the meat affordable, or does it seem high-priced here in this little village? The meat does seem affordable. They're selling uh, three pieces of jerky for a total of five copper. Three pieces of jerky for five copper. I tell the individual. Otherwise, each individual piece of jerky costs two copper each. So it's a deal. It is. And, you know, I tell him, I said, I'm not only willing to pay that five copper. I tell him how impressed I am that in this tiny little village, you're doing so well. And basically, I just try to win him over a little bit with compliments and see if he decides to give me a deal, like throw in some extra or anything else and whatnot. Uh, sure. Make a charisma check for me. Uh, before I do, I... Uh, no, that would really work against me flipping a gold coin in front of him. You know, the <laughs> pay copper. That would really be bad. I believe it is a silver coin. I, either way, not like the best, but like. Um, that's all right. I'll just uh, um, make a charisma check. We could do that. All First right. roll of the night. Slash. Oh, 
Oh my. And what do we get? And that fits because, you know, that's a six for me. That is a six for he you. He spits in my food. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs a little and says, I think I charge some uh, some fair prices for my meat. Honestly, I feel like it's a steal to get three pieces of jerky for just five copras. It's half a silver for three funky pieces of lizard meat here. It absolutely is. I mean, you know, I, I hadn't asked you for a discount, but, you know, I feel that, you know, your stuff is really high quality as Rob tries to, you know, continue to be gracious and hand, fork him over the five and start chewing on one myself, give one to a, you know, bird and, you know, start walking around, taking in a little bit more of this village and the people. Is there anybody walking around? Is there anywhere that looks wealthy? Are there you children see, here? You see two young boys who are running one after another. They look identical. Uh, they're both hollering and screaming about something. You assume they're playing some form of tag, but it looks slightly dangerous uh, as they both are wielding sticks at each other. That's better than machetes. <laughs> and then you hear the shopkeeper behind you shout, Hey, Gaius! Gaius, there's a new dude in town! Uh, the, okay. The shopkeeper looking... Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess uh, I probably would have come from uh, from the I guess uh, the local jail. Is that pretty close by then? Yes. All right. Well, I guess I'll uh, walk over or saunter over. Uh... Oh, hello there. Uh, you don't uh, seem to be somebody who's visited before. Uh, uh, what can I do for you? You probably uh, smell me when you uh, get within a good distance of me because again, three months on the road, and it's not like I've been staying at the uh, finest establishments along the way. There's just not a lot of fine establishments. So I'm pretty stinky. My Stitch. hair, my black hair is still standing on end and whatnot. And look over at you a little strange. Brown my eyebrows and say, what's it to you? Overly guarded. And you can see it aside. He, uh, he actually has, I'm sorry, across his back. Um, you can see the hilt of swords and whatnot. So clearly this person's a fighter of some type. I, I also realized I, I totally messed up my voice there. I, I <laughs> okay. already off to a great start. It's okay. Uh, I don't even uh, have a voice yet. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You don't necessarily need one. Uh, it just seemed fitting for, for I guess, uh, the character and, and even more so for where we're at. Um, all right. Well, uh, it looks like you're fairly well on there. Uh, not exactly sure that you're going to need all those things around here, maybe for a few lizards, but uh, mostly... Uh, just need to be a little bit careful. You are kind of out uh, uh, a ways from any kind of city. What are you looking for out here? Well, I've already found it. I want I was looking for some num 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 num. And I have some of that right here. So is this the same lizard that you're hunting? I mean, because it tastes pretty good. At that well, point, my exactly. bird snap, tries to snatch the second piece out of my hand. And I'm like, Ugh. you know, and I look at the kids as they're running through the street thinking, all right, well, no engaging them. Well, uh, uh, shouldn't exactly be too hard to find more of those things around here. Uh, I guess you could call them some of nom noms if you really want to, but uh, I like to call them Rick Racks myself. Uh, there's plenty around here, though. You just have to look uh, anywhere where it's a little muddy. So, oh, you're living in the mud, is what you're saying? No, there's not exactly a lot of mud around here. You have to be a little bit careful about where you find your water, but uh, when you find a little bit of moisture, you find a lot of Rick Racks. It was. So you're one of the locals. You've lived here this whole time? It, uh, seven in the militia. Sometimes I like to go out and help with the, the trading around here. But uh, other than that, yeah, mostly hang around here. Make sure everything's all right for all the people they're about. To. They need a lot more help than they look. So you tend to, uh, you know, sensing an opportunity here. So you tend to know all the locals then. And it's yeah, quite more or less. Wonderful. Well, you know, perhaps I could... um buy your drink and get to know a little bit more about this area if you'd be willing to chat with me a little bit well that's all right don't exactly drink a whole lot but uh you know if you want you can talk me up pretty much any time other than that uh you know i just mostly try to keep a watch on things so i can walk and talk <laughs> joffrey watch the jailhouse ah uh, you hear somewhere from inside damn it joffrey so you're the local uh magistrate as well no, no, just uh, mostly watching the place. Uh, uh, well, Gosson's gone. Uh, mostly uh, just, uh, you know, making sure everything stays tidy. Keeping a little thief inside. 
So, DM, considering the uh, letter that I received that has brought me here to the land of goody nom noms and rick racks, and yes. uh, rick racks and tic tacs and other things, I might need a tic tac, something to clean me up a little bit. Um, what uh, what would be an appropriate approach to find more information on that that would not uh, divulge secrets here? Because you know the world better you than Rob. imagine finding the local gossiper would probably help. And if anybody knows the local gossiper, it's probably the guard. He tends to know everyone. Well, this guy seems like the local gossiper Maybe he's a bad already. guard. Maybe he doesn't care about the local health. But would I like just, I mean, is it an appropriate thing? Because knowing who the letter is from seems like it would be more secretive. But, I, you know, I mean, if it's like something I can just talk about out loud, I can be like, hey, do you know anything about such, such and such? You imagine because of the contents of the letter, it would be hard. Sorry, my cat is on my lap. Uh, you imagine it would be hard to kind of ask so directly or to show off your letter and say, I heard from these people without either getting disbelief and or some sort of shunning. So you imagine your best chance to be would be to go to the tavern, as you were suggesting, or a walk around with this guy and ask generalized questions without going into details. Like maybe if there were any sort of disappearances or if there's been anything funny going around town. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. Perfect. So I definitely want to uh, approach Gaius a little bit more and Hey guys. Uh, so, you know, if you're taking a break, uh, you mentioned walking about, um, is there a tavern here or somewhere where a traveler can actually get a drink and, um, Maybe more than just the rickrack that my bird here got? <laughs> well, yeah, there's uh, plenty of places that you can go to for drinks, but uh, if you're looking for the local watering hole, as, uh, as I call it, uh, yeah, there's one around here. But, uh, you know, um, prices are cheap, but we don't exactly have a lot. So what is it with water here? I mean, you're talking about mud. You're talking about water. Is like, um, I'm guessing water is not scarce, but what's the deal here? It's just you a little dry around here are located in the grasslands this town is located in the grasslands but you can see not that far off on the horizon just past the entrance of the town towards the edge of the town it is located right next to what you would consider scorched lands badlands very dry not desert but like cracked land sort of area very red okay as you can see uh, we're not exactly too far from uh, where people's bleached bones pave the horizon Bleached bones? Why, you kill that many people around here? Not particularly, but if they decide to go tromping around the, the desert without preparation. that were running around before have now run up to Gaius, both of them poking around him and saying, oh, no, he's killed lots of people. Oh, yeah, lots of people. I've seen him murder people just for the sheer fun of it. Sheer fun of it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to grab him by the ear and start uh, moving them away. So, Pop's going to give you guys quite a look, and if, if, uh, when he gets back, if you guys don't stop this, you know he's going to. Oh, come on. You're no fun, guys. Yeah, you're no fun. <laughs> get off. Get off. Come on now. Don't bother the new person. They you both start running off, continuing to thwack each other with their sticks. <laughs> Not so hard. <laughs> We're going easy. Don't be a killjoy. Kill your joy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, that's, since that's taken care of, uh, the local ragamuffins uh, put in their place. Uh, how's about going to the watering hole? Uh, something uh, to put my mind uh, off of. The I would siblings. really like that. You know, uh, which building is it? They don't, like, have the signs that I'm used to. I'm kind of used building. to uh, places that are a little bit bigger than this. <laughs> uh, yeah, looking for big. I, I don't think you found the right place there, mate. Uh, not exactly the best place for a lot of civilization. Uh, great for Rick Brax, though. Well, as I said, this is where I'm looking for. I just, that's what I'm used to. That's what I come from and whatnot. But great. So which one is it here? And All right. Is it? Follow me. And uh, follow. I guess I'll take him to wherever the, you know, local local drink place is at. Yeah, you take him over to the uh, local watering hole, as you put it. <laughs> and upon entering, now, a lot of these buildings are built with clay. It's very obvious. They've kind of got much more square shapes, flat roofs. Uh, and nice wooden doors, uh, most of the time just like, what do you call this, hinge? 
doors where they kind of very western saloon style, style doors where they both saloon open. style doors and upon entering uh the five people plus the bartender all go quiet and they all look over at you rob since you're the new folk around town and they don't tend to get many visitors and then the bartender looks over at guys who's he uh, he's just a newbie. Uh, wandered into town. I guess he's uh, looking for a place to get a drink. So uh, figured I'd leave. We him got a newcomer, here. guys! And suddenly everybody's quickly trying to clean the tables off of dust and other such. Excuse me, sweetie. Sweetie, thank you. <laughs> and other <laughs> such dirt that tends to gather as time goes on to try and make the place look spick and span for the newcomer. You uh, looking to stay a while? The bartender asks. Oh, first it... drinks on me. Fantastic! I you know, give him a thumbs up. I invite uh, all those other ones that are scurrying around. You know, hey, I'll tell you what—it doesn't look like you get a lot of people here often. Why don't you come on over and have a seat? You know, if you, you know if you guys don't have any other work to do, tell you what—I'll take that first. You know, drink on me, and then I'll buy a round for everybody here, including your employees. Everybody seems to perk up at that. Uh, all of the locals who are sitting at tables. The bartender blinks, seeming to think about this, looks around, says, well, I don't have any employees, but, uh, and they hop over the bar instead of using the walk around section. Sure, why not? They reach around, grabbing a bottle and start to fill up cups for everybody, getting things situated before sitting down at a table and patting it so that way you all can sit down with them. Wonderful. Uh, he's got the bottle there. I'm sure he brought some glasses and whatnot. Uh, if not, I asked him about that because, you know, hey, look, we can pass the bottle all day long. But um, I also asked what him. What are you thinking about, Rob? Tea. I'm thinking about tea in a bath is what I'm thinking about. <laughs> you're thinking about tea in a bath. So so you're kind of thinking this place is kind of dirty for your usual? No, I'm thinking that I've been on the road for three months and I really want a bath. And I'm thinking tea because while well, he brought a bottle that's alcoholic and I've been on the road for three months and, you know, we're talking about water, we're talking about mud, I'm feeling dirty. And I'm thinking really just anything soothing before I get rip-roaring drunk, you know, maybe getting cleaned up might be nice. Okay. And I'm still wearing the studded leather armor, you know, it's like clearly I've been on the road with my armor, with my swords, um... The armor really seals in the flavor. <laughs> yeah, and actually. You get a situated now with the bartender at a table and Gaius at the same table. Uh, so, uh, Rob, uh, right, Rob, right? That'll do. What, uh, what brought you to this town specifically, do you think? Well, I was coming down here because I heard action. Some people on the road were talking about it and said... You know, I just kept hearing some num 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 has some stuff going on, and they sure as heck weren't talking about Rick Racks. I mean, so what's the deal around here? Why is everybody chatting about this place? I only see a hundred people here. You're small, and while he does that, I actually pour some drinks for some of the others. Anybody that's glass is getting kind of low. So we got a total of how many people here now? Because it's the barkeep, Gaius, myself. Five plus the barkeep and you two. So then that's five, six, seven, eight people. Nice. So, yeah, you know, the bottle ain't going to last long at that. I mean, unless, I mean, Shotzi's even going to, you know, polish, polish off a bottle pretty quick. But, yeah, I asked him if I can get some tea, too, possibly, at the table. Um, I know the bar keeps over here. I don't really want him having to run back and forth. That's kind of weird. You know, invite everybody over and then tell me. The barkeep says it's not an issue. You know, they, they seem like they're pretty happy because they're making quite the payday. They're not used to making this much in one day. What with you continuing to pull out the... Uh, drinking, continuing to pour shots from the bottle. Mm -hmm. uh, and they will get up and they will happily get you some tea again on the house. Wonderful. I uh, pay attention. Is the bottle getting empty or is the bottle like, you know, just staying full in unusual ways? Uh, no, the bottle is emptying out just fine. Just as one might expect a bottle to empty. Perfect. You know, only because I'm just keeping my eye open. Um, I want to passively try and... Uh, if anything is unusual or catching my eye or moving about or upsets hockey, I mean, I noticed that nobody has bothered about hockey. So if there's rafters, I'm going to let hockey instead of just sitting on me, you know, fly up to a rafter if that's okay. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Your hawk mm -hmm. goes up there. Uh, you get one guy who's a little bit tipsy who kind of says, as long as he doesn't poop on me. No guarantees he's a bird. 
Maybe he should stay outside. Well, birds tend to digest pretty quick, so unless he eats you or eats something else, and of course it's right around then that I remember that, oh yeah, I just gave Hockey some meat like not long ago, so. <laughs> I don't know, DM, does, is, there, is the bird pooping? Uh, the bird is starting to lift up his tail feathers, so that might suggest he's about to poop. If All you right. want to send him out. Hey, Hockey, out. Since the saloon doors are just, you know, I'm guessing halfway up, it's easy for him to fly yep. out. And he'll fly out and go perch himself outside for you. And as the barkeep gets back with some tea and sets it down in front of you, he looks over to guys and says, I guess Commander Garson got over to uh, Holing just fine, huh? I mean, if there are other people hearing about what's going on here, I mean, Garson seemed like it was an emergency. He seemed to uh, leave in quite a bit of a hurry. I haven't heard exactly anything back from him yet, but uh, I'm assuming he must have made it over there fine. Investigate. I assume it's the disappearances, though, right? Yeah, it's probably got something to do with that. He did say he needed to leave in a hurry. He didn't leave me with a lot of instructions. Just said, watch the place. Hope he doesn't die on the road. He is getting old. Yeah, but he knows the roots. Yeah, and I think at this point, most of the thieves are just kind of scared of him. He's got that intimidating stare. <laughs> Well, I've been on the receiving end of that stare several times, and I can tell you, it's pretty effective. Agreed. Yeah. Oh, that guy gives me the creeps sometimes, but I mean, nobody else to do the job. Well, except for you, where are you Trevor. Is... God knows where he's gone off to. Why? What, and... Who's Trevor? Trevor was another man in the militia, but we don't know where he's gone to. There's also... Joffrey. Give it Joffrey. So in this little town, you have a militia? Just some local guys. Okay. Help keep the ruffians away. And you pay them regularly? You get a lot of ruffians through here. We give them free food and stuff. Uh, Garson handles the payments. I don't know if he gets money from polling, but, you know, we help to keep the place running. They're prison and all. You have that many prisoners? I'm trying to we get We have feel a prisoner. Only one. Uh, just, uh, you know, some uh, little bugger who was out on the roads trying to feed for people. Bastard! Did you cut his hands off yet? Yeah, don't really cut his hands off. Not really sure what to do with him yet. I was kind of going to wait until Gawson got back to handle him. You want me to have a talk with him? I can do that. Well, not particularly. I don't know if you're really a lawman i mean you look like you might be a bounty hunter but uh i, I don't know nothing about you being a sheriff <laughs> i stare at him long and hard looking directly into his eyes sure uh garson make a perception check <laughs> okay there it is 16 so he's staring at you, Garson, and, you know, you're pretty far <laughs> off and away from the capital. But you've heard rumors about the king, and the, technically the queen, though the queen hasn't been seen for a very long time. So mostly just the king of the land, uh, King Elmstone. And apparently he has a gaze that's just so royal and regal that apparently... Anybody who looks upon his eyes or his descendants' eyes, it is just clear that they are of noble birth. And you've heard that it's as golden as the money that he owns. And when you look into Rob's eyes, his eyes are just golden, just like the stories of the King Elmstone himself. It almost makes you think that this guy is... Probably one of his descendants. That would make hmm. him a prince. Pretty high nobility. Well, that's uh, foreboding. <laughs> he says out loud. <laughs> foreboding? Is there some sort of uh, witch around here? Oh, not I that have. I'm aware of. Uh, although I do have to say there have been a few people disappearing. I, I don't suppose uh, you would have heard anything about that on the road, would you? Well, as I said, the rumors on the road were that something was happening down here. And naturally, anything that happens in the land is of concern to its people who truly care 
for what is happening. You know, we don't want any of our individuals going missing. I mean, isn't that why we hire militia? Isn't that why citizens rise up to take care of things? So really, gentlemen, that's why I'm talking to all of you. What strange things have all of you seen? I mean, beyond the local rickrack and riffraff. I like that. Rickrack? Riff riff you talking about the lizards? Well, that's what this fine gentleman guy is here is telling me about. A lot of rickracks that, around that's here. That's just his name for them. Oh, what do you call the local lizards? Other than They're dinner. They're lacerats. Velocerats? Lasser. Lasser. Like a lasso, but lasser. Lasser, lasso, lasser. I, you know, velocir I've heard of velociraptors, you know, but they're not really a lasso type, so. Hmm. I've never Lacerat. heard of a velociraptor. You never heard of that? Well, keep, oh. They're beautiful. I keep telling big you, birds. Bucky, you got to think about it this way, you know? I realize we call them lacerax, but why not call them rickrax? You've seen the design of the bat. They're right. It's that like, exact curve. Uh, he waves a dismissive hand at you. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we call them Rick Rex? I mean, we're the town who has them. Yeah, and I mean, name. Charlotte, she's beautiful, especially when she grows that nice moss overcoat. But uh, Rick Rack seems like it's a service to her, don't you think? Especially uh, now that she's lost her mate. I don't exactly. Lost you know, her mate? What is that one of those unusual things going on around here? I mean, is that one of the people? You got Trevor <laughs> going missing. She lost her. I mean, did she find him? It lost as in suddenly killed? I mean, I don't want to be discourteous to the family. lost Dickens. We don't, we don't know where he's run off to. Normally, he stays right by her side. But the mister never goes far from the missus just in case if you catch my drift. Mm -hmm. uh, but Dickens, Trevor, Patrice, and uh, Dixie have all gone missing. Some of the men are real sore about Dixie going missing. Wait, wait, wait. Well, who's Dixie? I mean, is this a child we're talking about? No. She, no. She's, no, she's no child. Uh, Definitely not a child. Just uh, really popular with some of the locals. Oh, I can understand being popular with locals. You know, I always try to leave a good impression behind me as well. So, you know, now she's missing, you say, but did she wander off? Nobody really knows. Uh, people usually don't disappear around here, so that's a little strange. But it could just be that people have been moving off. I mean, you never know. We don't exactly have a lot down here. Well, you know, usually you can kind of tell that by whether they packed up their things. Did she leave her things behind? Yes, I realize I'm dealing with locals, and I'm feeling very far from the city the longer this conversation goes. <laughs> <laughs> As you should. <laughs> Yeah, she uh, she just left. Maybe she's off to uh, holding though to set up a bigger shop. <laughs> I am stepping away for th about twenty seconds. I want to get a light so that I don't have that stinky shadow going around me all the time. Be right back. Sure thing, sure thing. And the uh, bartender turns to Bye. Gaius and kind of leans Bye. in and says, oh, "Like, what do you think the deal is with this guy?" Uh, pretty sure he's trouble. Right. I mean, who carries around that many weapons? I know we're off-road from the main rooms, but we're no holing. But, uh... Well, I'm going to hope on the bright side and just uh, hope that he's trying to sell them, pock them off around here or something. To be fair, we could use a few more blades around here, but uh, mostly... Yeah, I but think what if trouble. he ends up being another Joffrey? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I we thought think we he'd got... be good, and, and look at him! Look at the Modern bright side potential. here. If it's another Joffrey, we got nothing to worry about because he won't do anything. Right, but we don't need another mouse to feed. I mean, if he doesn't do anything and he's not getting a paycheck, he's not going to be able to stay here. We don't need a town hobo. He does have money while he's here, though, and uh, as long as he's not causing trouble, I'm not going to worry. No, we I'm, do have I'm some gonna, bigger things going on right now. I'm going to get some new polishes for these tables at the end of this. What with him drinking a whole bottle of liquor here and sharing it amongst us all? <laughs> well, uh, just uh, try to enjoy the new kind there. Uh, you know, don't uh, don't expect a whole lot. You know, we don't get travelers too often. Uh, we're, we're trying to, you know, we're, we're not like, I don't think we're being too aggressive. Do you think we're being too aggressive? No, like, no, like, I think you're being the right him? amount of aggressive. Okay. I don't want to scare him off. I want him to, like, stay for, you know, however long he's going to stay. Maybe he has a good trade skill. Maybe he'll want to stay here forever. I w <laughs> don't say something so ominous. <laughs> Uh -oh. I didn't mean it like that. I come in and uh, I hear ominous. Rob, you've been noticing that these two have been engaging in a whispered conversation. Which two? I wasn't. The bartender side. and Gaius. Right at the table with me? 
Wow, yeah. Dude, they have like no social state whatsoever <laughs> around here. I am in, I have come to Hicksville, the land of the yeah. Rick Racks. I have truly that is, that is traveled to the bottom of the world. Yes, three you months have. On and, and, a rumor, really no quiet, less. If you're really quiet and you just listen for a little bit, you could hear. <laughs> you know, wow. Um, <laughs> Rob <clears throat> watches this uh, conversation. Can I, um, like, did they lean in close where it's like, I know I'm not going to be able to hear it? You or can is make a just... perception check. Okay. Or mm-hmm. is there anything better for hearing, really? I don't think No, there that's is really perception. Than... Yeah. Say, but... say, I think it's just perception. That's all you got. Ooh, not too shabby. That would be a 17 flat. Oh, yeah. Your name is dropped all the time. It's very clear that they're talking about you. And they're discussing whether or not you plan to stay, why you've got so much armor and gear on you, whether or not you're trouble, if you'll be joining the local militia, if you'll end up like Joffrey, or if you'll actually be a <laughs> conductive member to society, whether or not you're going to be the town's local hobo. So... One of the things that I do uh, while they're having that conversation, you know, pretending like I didn't hear it, I just sit there and um, pull, reach into my side, and I pull out a gold coin, solid, you know, coin of the realm, knowing that everything here is like coppers and all this, and you know, yeah, I bought a bottle and all that, and I place the gold coin down in the middle of the table, and I say. Uh, Barkeep, that's for, you know, whatever we incur right here. And I was thinking that maybe there's a room in the town because if this Godfrey has gone missing and this lady has gone missing, clearly we've got some people going missing and it's probably something that you might need some outside help with. Looking at all of you uh, fine individuals, um, I I tend to travel the road a lot and I wouldn't mind looking into this for you. Um, Normally I'd have to taking the gold and quickly pocketing it just in case you change your mind. We don't really have anything to pay for that sort of thing. And if we did, it'd be Commander Garson, but he stepped out to go to holding. I understand. Um, Right now, I'm just more concerned when I hear people go missing. You know, an individual like me wants to stay at a nice place when I come. And right now, I could really use a bath and a nice place. And if people keep going missing, there aren't going to be any nice places now, are there? So how about you just let me point me in the right direction. Let me know who I need to talk to to find out more about this. And maybe I'll go look at that lady's room and we'll see together, Gaius, if she actually packed up her things and it, or if she's actually missing. Because if her things are packed up, clearly she just left. Uh, sh- uh, he, then he gets kind of nervous and he says, well, I'm not allowed to just let people into other people's houses. And then he looks at Gaius. Uh, you probably have the keys to her place, though, if you guys are doing an investigation. Yeah, I'm sure we can find some good way inside it without. So I'm with the right person. I look at Gaius and give him my best kind of smile, which usually looks like I'm snarling, you know. Um, but it's my attempt at smiling. You know. <laughs> Very prolific. <laughs> and I applaud the effort also, at least. for a place to stay, you could either stay with Gaius or you could stay with uh, Lorelai. And Lorelai is. She's Garson's wife. Lorelai Garson. Oh, okay. Lorelai Garson. File the name away. Why would um, he want his wife having somebody else stay with her? You know. Getting totally she's, the wrong impression. She's like seventy-eight. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think, she's uh, she and Garson have done anything like. They're, they're they're just the old folk of our place, you know. You uh. So I'd be staying at be Garson's place as well, not just with his wife. <laughs> well, Garson's out right now. I'm holding. Well, well, it is wonderful to watch you squirm in front of it, new it, people. It it, it probably he might not be the smack. best. <laughs> impression to stay with uh somebody's wife when they're not there well they they have multiple rooms that's always where our guests stay we don't really have an inn oh so it's a guest house okay well Um, no it's their house they just have a guest room oh my um small town i mumbled to myself small town living um (laughs) 
you know, if that's the custom here, then, you know, we wouldn't want to break the customs. Well. He takes a sigh of relief, realizing that, like, everything's gone okay. I think for now, uh, you should probably get this man a, a bucket of water to try to wash up with, uh, maybe get that smell out of the room. You don't uh, have a bath here? Are you saying? Uh, not at the bar, but over at Lorelei's, there's, oh. there's room, there's a tap. I think I'd like to do that, and perhaps, uh, guys, you might show me where that is, her house, and we can discuss next steps. I can walk you over that way, but uh, uh, we'll see how she treats it. I mean, you know, I can't exactly make decisions for her. Well, if you, you could show me the house, though, right, so that I could yeah. speak to her? I can do that at the very least. Okay, because yeah, otherwise I'm just going to go around knocking <clears throat> on random doors here, and I try to make a joke, see if anybody laughs. The bartender snickers a little, but then it gets kind of nervous and tries to wash the table up a bit more. <laughs> the, the laughter is high pitched. <laughs> <laughs> when the royals make bad jokes. So yeah. Rob gets up and, uh, you know, thanks everybody, you know, for their time, you know, trying to be very social and courteous um, as best you can. It's like, you know, hey, look, appreciate you. You may all be riffraff, but you know what? You're appreciated riffraff. So. Cool. It's the um, small peasants that make the kingdom great. <laughs> it's the work of peasants. It's the backs <laughs> of peasants that make the kingdom great. Um, oh my. So It's not that I don't understand it. It's the backs of peasants that I walk upon, and I appreciate it. That's it. <laughs> Truly. So, as we, uh, as we leave, I flip my golden coin, and um, not the one that I gave him, a different golden coin. And walk out with uh, hopefully Gaius going with me. I'm like not trying to leave Gaius behind. <laughs> I think Gaius will be leading the way, leading the way all yeah. the way to Lorelai's house. Uh, I think as, uh, as soon as he exits, uh, I'll uh, just linger in the bar for just a second and uh, be like, uh, Barkeep, uh, maybe you should uh, work on your little uh, a little bit of uh, warm entry for the, the, the newcomers a little more. This guy's rich. Do go going. What uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to retire, man. How did I get two gold coins? I put one. I, I on thought you said you flipped another gold coin at him, different from the first no. one. Oh no! no I just no, said no, I flipped flip my gold coin. I'm just oh. flipping it like as I walk. You know, you okay, flip a okay. coin and you oh catch no, it. honey, you knocked over the camera. <laughs> oh, honey. I hear uh, the purring. <laughs> She's like purr, purr. Yes, I've knocked this over, and now I'm standing on your keyboard. Enjoy. <laughs> It's fun. Oh, We're yeah. watching security cat butt go by the camera. It's like, hmm. Today, I have succeeded uh, in being a cat. <laughs> sorry, then. In that case, my gold coin man, if he, if he orders like this every single day at the tavern, I'm going to be able to retire. Wouldn't exactly bet on it. Uh, just make sure you uh, spend wisely with that gold coin there, mate. And uh, I'm going to leave. I heard the word spend <clears> wisely, <throat> and then my earbuds came out. <laughs> That's more or less the message. All right. I, I pretty much left after that, so... <clears throat> After after we're outside though, and uh, we're walking on our way to to, to uh, Garson's house, uh, I'm just gonna be like kind of whispering uh, to Rob on the way and be like, uh, I know you're exactly uh, uh, from uh, a bigger place than this, capital, nobility, something like that. Try not mm -hmm. to cause too much trouble while you're here. People have enough to worry about, and I can't exactly stay on top of everything by myself. So as we're walking and I'm following his lead, I ask guys, I said, so. Your idea of causing trouble is offering to help find missing people, or? I'm just giving you a warning. Don't cause any trouble if you can avoid it. I don't want another that big city stuff coming in here with politics and soldiers and everything. I know there's some people moving around in some of the bigger places like Holing. Lots of movement about. Don't know what's going on. Don't want the trouble here. You know, I feel you. Have you ever thought that maybe there's a reason why only one armed person came here? Hmm. That you're clearly separated from whatever group you're a part of. Or maybe the rulers of this land prefer to send one of their own to see how things are first. To try to honor the locals' customs and protection and offer our support. We'll see. On the way. Here we go. <laughs> I need you both to make a perception check. Do-do-do-do-do-do. Do, 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 do. Mm, 13. I'm sorry that mine says story guide when I roll. Um, That's okay. We're using the same uh, 
you know, you uh, notice the beautifulness of the ground, Rob. But spooks, or, uh, sorry, guys. Guys, you happen to notice two little boys who are leaning around a wall with their ears kind of like this are now running off. I'm just going to wave them off and, like, kind of discreetly be like, you're out of here. <laughs> they run off. They scamper off. They feel like they've gotten all the information they need. What? What is it? We're going to have to get kicked out of this right. <laughs> Someone's needy today. Yes. So not noticing the children, and I'm assuming Bird has come and caught up to me, as is our custom, yes. riding along on my shoulder. And you, know. and you get over to the Garson house. Gaius knocks on the door. The door is opened by a little old lady who goes, Oh, Sonny, it's so good to see you again. Is Garson back? Uh, My poor like Emmett, uh... it's been so long. He's not back yet, ma'am, uh, but uh, we do have a newcomer here. I guess he's uh, looking for room and board, so I guess he's coming here seeking for some permission. Oh, yes, 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 certainly. We take in any riffraff who come on through. How long are you staying? Are you heading out to Coverhaven? That's where most people go when they stop through our town. I, I kind of glance at you myself. You need a boat to get to Coverhaven. Uh, I happen to know a town. It's if you can make it in the Bevis, we'll give you some water to go, though, for free. No no need to worry about it. Getting through the Badlands is hard, especially especially during the hot season and all. Uh, but we can get you some extra water to make it out to the, the last town in the middle uh, in the middle of the Badlands. And then we'll have some boats for you uh, to, to get you out to Coverhaven, if that's the way you're headed. Well, how about we take but this one step at a time? Can we come in that, and maybe... Uh, I was hoping for a bath. It's a big city. It's not like this city. Uh, you know, the people, they just push each other over. Not very well mannered. I didn't like my time. You call much. this a city? You well, call this... call this a city? <laughs> you just said not well, like the city. Let's get the small little village down. We call oh. ourselves some numb here, uh. Uh, did, did you just think this was a city, though? That's very polite of you. Well, well what you did say, not did like, like this city, I, I I, was a little confused. So, I'll tell you what. Yeah, it's... Coverhaven. Coverhaven's a big city. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's good for fishing ports and the like. And I, I've heard that there's a pretty, pretty big uh, fishing town out there. I've also heard all about where magic fish oil can cure anything. That's, that's what they say, but... But you don't believe the hubbub that people talk of about. Of course you know? not. Magic's silly. Have you heard well, anything about me looking for a room by chance? Advertising. You don't get swayed by propaganda, okay? Just because it says it can cure anything doesn't mean it can cure anything. It just tends to mean like stomach aches and Some of the things that I heard were that you rent that rooms curing. and I might get a bath here. I can't hear you. You need to speak up, sweetie. You know, I raise my voice and I get real close. Bath. Room. Room with a bath. <laughs> <laughs> he looks over to Gaius. What is he saying? He smells bad and he needs a bath. Oh, I could have told him he smelled bad. Oh, he smelled horrible the moment he came in here. <laughs> Shit, let me bring you to the bathroom. <laughs> she directs you over to the bathroom to get yourself washed. I, I see the hole in the ground and whatnot and imagine the bucket beneath it. And I see the pitcher of water there in the basin. I say, thank you. I'm looking to rent a room and get a hot bath. <laughs> You're looking to leave soon? Yes, and get a bath first. <laughs> a what? Just, just, just write it out for her if you got a paper or something. Oh, my eyesight's not so good. That'd be silly. Guys. I look at the guys. I say she's able to hear you pretty well. How about I go in here and use the bathroom for a few minutes, and you could tell her what I'm looking for. Uh, <laughs> no, no, please do. To it, you, you from the big city. You know, yes, and then I close the door to the bathroom as I go in. Well, that was very rude. Normally, we at least have three goodbyes before people just close doors on us. Yeah, don't worry. Normally, about it. we leave the door open here. while we use the bathroom. I guess <laughs> I don't know. Here's the bathroom. <laughs> Normally, you know, <laughs> you're doing the pee pee dance for at least five minutes before we let you go. 
<laughs> Cookies, now, guys. Oh, uh, and have, have you seen my Emmett? He left but to holding. It must have been five months ago. I'm just going to let her wander for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure he'll be back soon. I'll go get the cookies going. And she walks off. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get a breather. Uh, Rob is going to take a bath. You actually find that there's more than just a hole in the ground. There's actually a nice clay tub Ooh. that you can fill with water. And it does appear to have a clogger that you can then unclog and it'll drain out. Oh, so wow. you can have a relaxing bath. So they've got uh, like a water pump in here and you guys can like, I yes. can pump away and fill it even though it's cold. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's fine. Um, I do check it. You know, there's no like, it's not coming out magically hot or anything, right? No, it's cold water. Are there any little rickracks coming out of the thing as I pump or anything like that that I should be nervous about? Let me roll a percent for you. Uh, you no, no rickracks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You've got to be worried about these strange rickracks and other things down here. Um, yeah, so after a little bit, you know, I've got all my stuff right next to me, you know. Um, just the sheer caution of being on the road so long, I lean the swords up next to the tub as I take the, you know, time to, you know, doff all my armor and whatnot, my items. And then when I'm done, I also, um, I you know, look around. Has anybody brought me a towel or anything in this last uh, There half is a hour? towel inside of the bathroom. Clean towel? Clean towel. Oh, nice. Very good. So I make sure that the water is what's dirty and, you know, clean it twice and then go over as best I can um, since I've got gear for my armor and stuff. Probably it's in better shape than my uh, physical body, um, you know, since. All right, we do the best. We get cleaned up about half hour or 40 minutes later. We come out to meet everybody else. My spiky hair now standing on end a little bit, you know, kind of mash it down a little bit as best I can. And you smell burning as you leave, and she appears to have come out with some sort of circle-shaped meat. Oh, you know, um, I uh, I see a uh, hockey looking like he really wants to go after the meat again. So I tell hockey no. And I go over to the door and put hockey outside. And say you stay and watch. And let I made hockey some fly. cookies, and she puts it down. And it smells like like jerky. Oh, she sniffs the air a few times. I hey. made some jerky. Thank you. And I pick up a piece of the jerky and try to bite it without breaking a tooth. <laughs> uh, it, it does actually crunch very nice. It's been so overcooked that, uh, you know, it's kind of gone crisp. It's extra crispy bacon. Exactly. Ooh. Exactly. So it, it breaks off quite easily. It's not the worst thing. Definitely the, the uh, taste of smoke fills your mouth. Best carcinogens ever. <laughs> it's so, it's uh what what fuels you man that's what you need so i looked at gaius and i asked him i said hey guys uh you know they were deferring to you inside the tavern i guess that you call that a tavern that watering hole that was what you called it the watering hole what do we need to do to check on these other two people who've gone missing i mean um i came down here to see if i could lend a hand but if you don't think there anybody here needs a hand not exactly. Uh, just a little bit short uh, stacked, considering that uh, the command is out of town right now. But, uh, you know, uh, I think as long as we go around and do a little bit of investigating, maybe we can find something. I do think if you are willing to help out, having two people better than one. We can't uh, we can't rely on Joffrey. Well, my whole point in coming here was to help to find out what's going on when we hear things that when I hear things that something's going on, I tend to want to. Lend a hand. So I hear people are missing. I hear the rickracks are out of control. And, uh, you know, l glad to lend a hand. Well, uh, I don't think there's uh, any problem with the rickracks right now. Uh, you know, usually you don't have to worry about them too much unless you get covered in them. But, uh, you know, it's mostly been a little bit of a few people disappearing here and there and, a, you know, a moss cow here or two. So who do we need to talk to about seeing whether somebody's actually missing or just taking off out of this one horse town? Well, I think uh, first things first, uh, maybe we could check out, uh, like you said, uh, Dixie's place, see if maybe she left his stuff behind. Yep, that was my thought. That's who do we have to check first because you said you can't just let me in. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, we can go right in, but uh, I mean, if there's nobody there, it's not like there's going to be an issue, you know? 
So now we don't need to ask anybody else. Okay. Uh, um, not particularly. You just got to play it nice in front of all the, the nice villages. You got to make sure everybody's calm. I, I made nice with the little old lady, um, listen to her for a little bit. And um, when the moment is right, you know, we'd like to try and segue out. Uh, also, ask her about renting a room before I go. Uh, she lets you know when she, you know, understands what you're saying that the rooms are not rented. They're just, you know, here to give good folks. And if you need help setting up a house or something, they can also help you set up a house for nice and cheap. Uh, but until then, room's free. Don't need to worry about that. Especially not if you're one of Dias's friends. And then she kind of gets the rails for a while. And then what was your other question when she gets back on track? <laughs> um, True to character. It was about renting the room and finding the nice segue that it's time for me to go. Oh, yes. That takes about like three or four goodbyes before you uh, finally get out the door. And then you're out and about in the town. Um, she will find in the bathroom um, on top of the towel, uh, which you don't fold a dirty towel, but, you know, we balled up the towel and put it next to it but i put a silver piece on top of that for her so <laughs> if she even sees it she might not even notice it <laughs> and that silver piece will be there until uh, emmett gets back <laughs> all right so gaius uh once we're out in town and uh birds up there flying in the sky following doing bird things i don't really worry about bird too much um why don't you show me where her place is and let's take a look see if she actually left or is missing all right, let's go see the house of the local Hollet. All right, you get over there. You've got the keys to the building. Gar Two seconds, I gotta take this kitty outside of the room. Come here, honey. Come here. <laughs> security's like, what? <laughs> Guard the door. Ah. <laughs> I like the way security just sits in front and is like, hello, security cat. So you gotta make sure there's somebody between you and the audience, you know? You know, it's funny. I sit there and think about that, like, you know, okay. cat helmet above uh, Kitty Doe on the screen. And I'm like, well, that's mm -hmm. a secu whole security cat thing. Maybe we should add that <laughs> into the uh, overlay security cat. <laughs> Makes sense, actually. It put put just like little pieces of armor all the way around the circle. So I see here uh, entering in. Um, is all her stuff here or has she packed up and left DM? All of her stuff is here. You're greeted by the strong smell of perfume, lots of curtains, you know, a nice big bed, other such things that you might find in a house like this. Certainly has not been packed up. Oh, I not see she has. the place you want to use a black light on. I uh, <laughs> say, oh, I see that she's a um, a successful entrepreneur. Said so doing very well for herself, I see. Now that is a way to put it. I said, um, yeah, I don't, I don't imagine many people walk away from a, a thriving business like this. And now that I don't stink, I can really smell the perfume well and whatnot. Um, take a look around and uh, see if there's any signs like maybe that, you know, she had a lover that chased her off or something like that or somebody she feared or, you know, I'm looking for the normal answer. Right. You pick up letters, uh. Besides maybe being able to expose the uh, bad marriage or two, you don't find anything that would suggest that she needed to get out of town fast. Hmm. So she really is. It appears for me, Gaius, that she's missing. Um, any suggestions on where, like, where was this Trevor looking when he went missing? I actually don't know at the time. Uh, Gawson kind of left in a hurry, and then uh, Trevor disappeared not long after. Truth be told, not been a lot of communication, not liking it too much, especially since there's so few of us. Hmm. So what would uh, be your suggestions? Well, uh, I think first things first, uh, why don't we go ahead and check the outside of the place and see if there's any place where somebody might have broke in. Let's do that. Um, well, we'd like to start doing that investigation, DM. Investigation, go ahead and make some rolls and you're investigating to look for break-ins, right? Yes. That's what you said? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's a suggestion, I think, between him and me. I can't imagine there was that many entrances and whatnot, but... Spooks did fantastic. Yeah, All right. I'm like... <laughs> so, Rob, you notice some tussled-up sheets uh, and the uh... like? Something that makes you think that maybe... Oh, actually, somebody... I have a plus eight on investigation, so that's a 14. So, oh, yeah. okay. So then, it's not uh, horrible. Even though the 
the blankets are tussled, you don't think this was a sign of a fight or anything. You just think these are just some tussled blankets. And guys, you're, of a 90, you're 99% <laughs> sure that nobody broke in here. I, okay. I was going to give Rob the idea that maybe somebody broke in here because his investigation was so low that he was just kind of putting together whatever. But uh, he's fine. He's fine. He, he got himself straight. He was like, oh, yeah. wait a minute. This is a harlot's place. Okay, never mind. Fair enough. Uh, well, if that's the case, uh, could we go around and, uh, well, I, I can't think of anything else other than maybe checking for tracks around the house. Uh, is this house closer to, like, the center of town, or is it closer to the outskirts? Closer to the outskirts. Okay. Uh, can I try to maybe do another investigation to look for tracks? Uh, as you head out, you start looking around for tracks, and... I mean, you do see. At, make I can make an investigation roll. Thirteen. You do notice the uh, tiny pinpricks of the back of her shoes that tend to dig into the dirt a little, heading off down the path, out of town. Out of town. Yes. Hmm. Well, that's unusual. What's Usually, that? Uh, a lady in pumps, uh, it wouldn't exactly be walking out of town. Wait, wait. How long ago did she go missing? Mm. Just a few days. Yeah. And the tracks are still here a few days later? Doesn't that seem unusual? A lot unusual of people come out to this part of town. Oh, okay. All right. Go also, they, they're digging into the ground, mm -hmm. the pumps. So, and again, this is grasslands, technically. So you're talking about dirt, not just uh, dry gulch. Well, shall we follow them as far as we can? I'm not a, exactly a tracker in the wilds, but we can do our best. I'm not either, but, uh, you know, it, we see some friends and they're going out, so I guess the best thing that we can do is at least follow them until they disappear. DM, do these look like they wander, or do they look like they're a straight bullet line? Uh... I'm I'm wondering about like summoning like does you know I want to know if she like felt like she was compelled like she walked in a straight line or she was Go just like oh go ahead and make an investigation check yeah because those do so well for me even with my bonus <laughs> I'm not enjoying roll twenty 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 fingers 20. crossed twenty hey, twenty four yeah uh huh uh these look like wandering like she's definitely on a path. But not like she is walking in this perfect straight line. Okay. So, hmm. She's meandering. She's moseying. She's moseying. Moseying along in high heels. That's kind of an unusual thing. Um, Especially out of town. Yeah. Um, I point out what I see to Guy so that he's fully aware. And let's just hoof it and see how long they last and how far we can get. You know, see if, if, if the next clue pops up. But why don't we also take a look? Uh, you said Trevor went missing as well. Do you see any hit? You're pretty good at noticing these prints. Do any of them match what he wore? Do you know what he wore? I mean, was was he the type of guy that wore pumps as well? Or <laughs> I don't want to judge. Uh, well, as far as I know, uh, Trevor mostly wore his, uh, his boots. But, uh, you know, the only things that I see here are where the pumps dig into the ground. And they're going out of town. And according to you, they're kind of wandering around a little bit. So not a lot of this makes sense. We don't really have a drug problem around here, so I wouldn't think she was, uh, you know, on a bender or something. You know, it could be that she and Trevor were meeting up with one another, so let's see if his come into this. Well, he's not the only missing person either. Well, who else do we got? Well, we got Patrice, uh, and then we got uh, Charlotte and Dickens. And Charlotte and Dickens, and I do the same hand motion, are who? Uh, don't worry about it. We just were uh, just talking about Charlotte's some Charlotte's still here. here. It's just Dickens who's missing. Oh, Charlotte is? Charlotte is here, yeah. Dickens oh, is missing. Oh, okay. Dickens is missing. Okay. Well, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that when we get to it. All right. Well, if we stumble across Charlotte's dick, then we'll pick that up too along the way. <laughs> Not exactly what I said, but uh, close enough. <laughs> eh, it's all good in the Rick Rack. Well, at least you're picking something up. <laughs> you Good old non-city living. 
You both head out along the path. I really wish I was playing a bard just so I could do the... <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, and as you guys are heading out along the grasslands path, heading back towards Halling, you all both need to make a perception check. Perception it is, DM. I'm right up. So this is taking us uh, north towards Halling? Yes, this path is taking you north. Ooh, no, I got awful. I got a six. And I got, Oof. you said it's perception? That's a 19 for me. 19. Rob, you notice rustling in the grass. Um, like large rustling, like a lion is hockey in the air. Has hockey given me any cries or warnings? I mean, uh, let me make a perception check for hockey. A uh, hockey has been crying to you in chirps of three. Which means, since I know hockey... Which means hockey's <laughs> telling you there are three things nearby. Ah, okay. I wasn't sure if that was like the, hey, there's treasure over here. <laughs> there's a triple threat or, hey, you're feeling triple lucky, threat. punk. Triple you know? threat. <laughs> um, I motioned to Gaius, put my fingers to my lips in a shushing sound, and then um, kind of squat down low and point over to where we've seen all those. And then I, I make a motion for three. Not not knowing if he'll understand that that means it's three foot tall or three people or what, <laughs> you know, but try and communicate it as best I can. And Mostly, I'm just expecting riffraff, so, you know, at I this guess point, I'll... What is your armor class, Gaius? Uh, it's 14. 14. All right, let me roll for some damage. You take five points of damage as an arrow gets shot into your shoulder. Oh, shit. That sucks. What an opening. Rule for initiative. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I tried uh, to save you, buddy. That's what I was going to say. <clears throat> when the DM says you're shot, it's usually the next words. <laughs> I wasn't trying to steal thunder, but I'm like, uh, you've been shot. <laughs> as long as, that, you know, I guess the, the DM to... could follow it with rule for a death save, but that would be really. <laughs> right. Uh, that was my suggestion, is that it's like, that's the other instance. <laughs> All righty. Uh, <laughs> let me see what your guys' rolls Oh, I got a six. Oh, okay. It's a one plus Are five. you ready for a party wipe? <laughs> so it'll be guys and then my guys. And then... Me Rob. and Hockey will bring up the rear. Guys, you got hit in the end. That has really spurred you into action. And I was so dumbfounded by you being hit that I forgot to prepare. Uh, make a quick. I'll make you a quick investigation check to see if you know where the arrow came from. You know, it's sticking out of your arm, so you know you got a general idea. Make a quick uh, investigation. With like half my health gone, I don't think it's sticking out of my arm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it got you good in the shoulder. <laughs> Uh, 20 total. 20. You know exactly where it is. You know what? You have seen thieves use this spot before for ambushes. Oh, my. Oh, son of a bitch. I'm going to kill him this time. <laughs> and you go charging out to go attack? Uh, well, I've got to pull up my shield. Uh, and uh, I got my harpoon at the ready. <laughs> All right. And so uh, gotta... I guess I'm going to go out there and start stabbing some people. <laughs> All right, you go out there, and you can close with it this turn. No need to run. You get over into the grass where you see this tiny green creature, not like anything you've seen before. It is not a lizard. Not that you would expect a lizard out in the grasslands. That tends to be behind the town, not in front of the town. But it's humanoid in nature. Hmm. Big green ears. Uh, no, they're actually short and stubby green ears. Oh, okay. Interesting. But they're they're about how how many feet tall? They're about three feet tall. How equipped are they? Uh, this guy only seems to have a bow and something to cover himself with. Ah, like a like a loincloth, basically? Like a lot of fur. Ah. So like he's green and fuzzy. <laughs> All right, then. Just a lot of cats. <laughs> Just covered in cats. <laughs> Totally. 
All right. Well, uh, either way, uh, green and not, time to get stabbed. <laughs> All right. Roll to attack. Uh, 19. 19, that hits. Go ahead and roll some damage. Okay. Uh, did it? Uh, looks like I got a three total. Uh, and then, uh, I think for my bonus action, I'm going to use second wind. Okay. Because, <laughs> uh, that was a lot of health to lose in just one go at level one. Now, uh, is that three... Plus uh, your uh, second what? wind uh, at the moment it is a one d ten plus one. Plus your strength, right? Because this is a strength weapon. Oh, oh, uh, you mean when when I did my attack? Yeah. Oh, it's it's one d six plus two, and it looks like I, I rolled a. Uh, it says one d six plus two equals three. This says three, that you so rolled I'm, a must've... three. It says oh, rolling oh. three. So you need to add your. That's. I thought it added it in already. It doesn't look like it when I highlight it. Okay. Well, I guess then that would be a five. All right. You did five damage to it, and it is dead. It oh. lets out a howling screech, and it, you can see where it kind of tries to grab at your, what was it? Uh, not javelin. The harpoon? Your harpoon <laughs> before it kind of goes limp on the end of it. Okay, well, I'm going to, you know, like I said, forcefully yank that out, and then and then that actually, like I said, uh, do the second wind after that. Okay. That, was, uh, that was pain. Pain! <laughs> You've got a second wind. Uh, you currently don't know where any of the other goblins are, though, if you want to oh, hold that God. second wind. What a, what a wasted nine. <laughs> That's okay, you can hold your second wind. You're getting super angry, then you're like, I don't know where to let this anger out to. Uh, I'll find you guys eventually. <laughs> well... Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> that brings it to their turn. Uh, does a 13 hit you, Rob? No. All right, and he got a net one, so five seconds. Let me see. Okay. You hear screeching on the other side of the road. So you just stabbed the one to death over on the left side of the road. Mm -hmm. Over to the right side of the road, though, and the other side of the grass is... You hear it? Ah, oh, not me, you dummy! Is that uh, where I heard the three from? On the right side or the left side? Or is that you Hockey was warning heard, me about? You or, heard one on the left, two on the right. That's what Hockey was trying to oh, tell okay. you. He was doing a big circle about the time, and then he got shot by one on the, the one on the left. Hockey got shot. No. Oh, Gaius. Yeah, uh, me. All right. Gaius. Yeah, I was like, wait, I, I'm like, damn, you kind of skipped this. I'm like, when did Hockey get Hockey shot? Hockey is now circling. <laughs> over the other two where they're at to make it easier on you, Rob, for finding them over on the right. Okay. So, did they get their turn? I mean, are they done? Uh, or is it me? The one missed you, and the other one got in that one and accidentally hit the other guy with an arrow. Ah, nice. So, I want to use my movement, run that way, sprint, roll in for an attack, uh, as I'm running, I want to fl uh, throw my, because I'm pulling my swords as a free action while I'm running, point my swords so that Hockey knows to come in with a help action and fly and dive bomb them, which should distract them enough to give me advantage on the roll. I'm just using the rules, but if you want something different to happen, let me know. Um, that sounds good. Okay, so what I'll do is I want to roll in, make my initial attack, and then with my offhand, if that guy dies, I'll attack the swords together on the other person. So okay. So kind of like... You know, whoosh, whoosh, cause my sure sword... thing, they are 10 feet apart from each other. Okay, so how far is the first one from me? That way I can judge the movement. Uh, I don't know if 30 feet of movement will be enough. You would say about 15 feet away from you. Okay, so 15 feet, and then you said the other one's about 10 feet beyond that? Yep. So my movement should work if I can attack, move in, kill the first person with advantage on my roll, hopefully, to then go in, and I will be trying a... Um, when I do this, I actually want to use non-lethal damage, so I'm going to try and use whether it's the broad side of the sword or something because I want answers about why they're ambushing us and whether or not they've seen the others. So that's my character's goal as I go in. All right. Kills. Go ahead. All right, so coming in, move, does a roll, does as an attack, and again, I have advantage, so I'll do this twice. 
And the first one was a three. And I am just rolling so hot tonight. I'm telling you. Uh, the roll kind of made you a little bit dizzy coming out of it. You know, you thought you were being super cool and intimidating, but instead you kind of got to hold your head for a few seconds. I'll but you can you. still make your offhand attack on this guy. You got a double three? I, yes, he did. I'm guessing so, yeah. I'm like, wow. <laughs> All right. And pulls back with the sword, goes the other way, and that is plus... That hits. Yeah, that's a 21, so... Um, all right, uh, all right, roll for damage. That'll be the one handed because that's the eight you have. Well, sorry, uh, D8 plus. I think that's how you do it. So it's 12 damage. 12 damage. This guy, uh, well, he, he uh, since you hit him with the kind of blunt end of your sword, not going for a stab, since you're trying to knock him out, he, he falls over. He's definitely knocked out. He's knocked out super cold. Nice. Well, my plan didn't go off as worse, but now we're only down <laughs> to one to pokey shoot me and kill me. And uh, I will use that... the rest of, my, rest of my turn anyway. No. Well, yeah, I don't I don't want to make it easier on this guy. I will hold my position and that's all. Yeah, I'll hold the movement. See whether okay. he's going to run away or not. Okay. Uh, guys, In fact, no, I'm please. going to... Sorry. Go for it. I am going to use the rest of my movement to get within range of him because I know that way if he runs, then I can do something. <laughs> yes, then you'll get uh. an attack of opportunity. Yes. <laughs> all righty. Gaius, you have just slain the one on the left side. You still aren't quite sure where the other ones are at. You definitely heard one scream, and then you think the same one screamed again. Uh, presumably your buddy there has murdered it, and you can still hear his animal creature cawing away. Okay, well, uh, I guess I'll turn around, and I will run towards where uh, Mr. Rob ran off to. Sure, he's easy enough to see above the uh, grass. You run over to him. That'll take you, what, uh, 5, 10, uh, 15 feet? Or 20 feet, because it was 15 feet from him, and you are an extra 5 feet away. So 20 feet, you are over at him. Okay. And uh, I see the, the one in front of me, or the one in front of him, rather? Yes. And then do I see the other one? You can make an investigation roll. I keep pulling up the wrong window. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I certainly do not. No, it blends in super well with the grass. Do so you still seems. hear the hawk cawing overhead? Okay, uh, well, uh, I didn't really see him try to take one alive, but I do see this one here, and it is alive. Yes, it so... appears to be breathing. It, it, <laughs> I'm going to aim so that it is not any longer. <laughs> All right. Go for it. I mean, I got shot. <laughs> oh, that is a miss. That's a uh, it is knocked prone. So you technically get advantage. Oh. Uh, nope. That's another seven. You do not hit it. You're... It's, it's, the, it's just that your arm's really bad right now. Yeah, yeah, no joke. We're throwing threes all over the place. That was two uh, threes in a row for me that as makes well. It, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I didn't realize. I forgot about this. Rob was actually over at the other guy. So you actually, both of those attacks, well, I guess only the one because he wasn't knocked prone yet. Rob had run over to the still alive one. And that's where he ended mm -hmm. his turn. So you ran over to where Rob was. You tried yes. to attack the still alive one. And you just missed. <laughs> so, that makes it this creature's turn. And he is running, so you both do get opportunity attacks on him. You're uh, muted. You, yeah, you're muted there. I thought they were separate from one another because you had me roll 10. You, you said it was 10 yes, extra Yes, that's feet. what I'm saying. I'm saying I thought he was attacking the one that was knocked unconscious, but then yeah. I remembered you had run over to the other guy, so technically he attacked the 
guy who was still up and standing. Oh, so he ran to where I am, not where I yes. was. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I yes. thought he was attacking the unconscious guy too. Because yes, gave that, him that was my bad. I was thinking you were still next to the unconscious guy. He ran to where you were though, so that put him next to the still conscious guy. Right. I, I just saw that you you go over there fighting on the other side, and I'm like, yeah, I'll go over that way. Gotcha. <laughs> Okay. Go for it. You you game first. You're the one that's uh, closer to it. I can't. I initiative Gaia, so you're at the top, I believe. Oh, is that how it works for attacks? It's of both opportunity, opportunity attacks. Uh, you both can go at the same time if you want. I, I personally, I don't care which way it goes. Uh -huh. You're both just taking an opportunity attack. Okay. Nope. Twenty-four. Ooh. That hits. And again, this is the same thing as I mentioned before. It's just unconscious I'm going for. And you do get sneak attack bonus. Not that you need it. Yep. You uh, knock him out. I was about to say, yeah, add another D6 to that. So, crack. So I whip out <laughs> as he's going away with the, you know, pommel to the he back of his head. Yep, you thwack him good. He goes down. Actually, it's much more epic if I throw the sword end over end and the pop will hits him in the back of the head. It's like, <laughs> so cinematic. That's it. Bam. Yeah. Uh, but Gaius, he is still breathing. Do you want to take your opportunity attack? I was about... Well, I was, shouldn't he, like... Didn't you say they happen at the same time? So shouldn't he just be making an attack anyway on it? That's, that's why I'm asking oh. you. Yeah. I mean, I can. If they happen at the same time, I'll go ahead and roll. Go for it. Uh, Eleven. <laughs> 11 hits. Oh. Uh, and then uh, I guess that is a D6 plus 2, which is 4 total. Alrighty. Did I uh, get... He stabs him. He's still breathing. It's actually wow. 6 because it, it only put the 4 there again. It didn't add his 2. Never mind. He's dead. Yep. So he's literally, very dead. I hit him in the back of the head and you, I'm guessing, harpoon him again. Trident, it says. It's a. It, I there's no harpoon option, so I did try it. Awesome. <laughs> you know, we'll have to uh, modify that. That's these, beautiful. A, <laughs> these creatures appear to bleed a black substance. I go over, pick up my sword, look at him briefly, and then I want to get over to the unconscious guy before this. What's going through my mind is really quickly is that Gaius is obviously killing off all of his henchmen and has led me into a trap. So I want to go over to the guy who's still breathing first um, so that I can get him to spill the beans if I have to kill Gaius. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, you go over and you're starting to tie him up with your rope, I assume? Um, first thing awake. I want to do is just grab him, make sure that he's protected uh, so that if Gaius comes over to try to finish off his last cohort, I can be, you know. Sure, and on the other him. end, Gaius, this was clearly a trap set up by, you know, Mr. Uh, Rob over here. And he's now he's trying to before. protect his last cohort. Yeah. Well, I mean, to me, it is, we've been attacked by weird little green bastards. And I've got an arrow sticking out of my shoulders that I'm going to try to carefully pull out. Sure, sure. Uh, oh, so that, that stings. Oh. Make, make a medicine check before you pull it out. There it is. Ooh, nat 20. Okay, so you definitely know pulling out an arrow is going to open the wound and cause bleeding, which will make so I, you take more damage. So you want to break it off. Well, that you got to get, get something on it at the very least. Okay. Uh, so you're pulling it out? I mean, if I've got something that I can, like, you know, put on it or put pressure on it or something mm -hmm. like that. but uh, uh, I don't know if you have anything like that on your character sheet. I don't either. I just went with like the standard equipment. Then I don't think you have any sort of medical kit on you in order to get gauze or anything else on it. So you're better off breaking off the majority of the arrow and keeping it there for now until you can get back to the local medic. <laughs> it's it's just a trophy. That's all. It's a trophy for now. Yeah. As Rob, you get this creature. Yeah, once uh, tied up. Yeah, sure. We're we're going with the tie up thing. I use my hemp and rope and tie him up. Uh, I I I just I didn't remember what you were doing. 
No, right now I was just trying to guard him, but you know, we're gonna go okay. with that. You said it twice, so let's go ahead and well, get no, him tied no, no. up. You, and you're guarding him until he wakes up. I'm guarding so... him to see what Gaia does. <laughs> but oh, Gaia okay. seems preoccupied with uh, the medical thing, so now that he does Gaius that, I slap the off. goblin awake and be like, hey. Gaius breaks off the arrow, and then what does Gaius do? <clears throat> uh, I guess start checking the bodies, and he's going to bring them both out to a place where we can investigate the both of them. You have never seen creatures like this, not in real life, nor in folklore. I guess I'll pat them down to see if they've got any other stuff on them. Uh, they have, in total, seven arrows, and they both have bows. Little short bows? Little short bows. Gotcha. Okay. I guess I'll just look over there and see what Rob's doing, then, uh, from a distance. Rob appears to be standing over one that is still breathing. Eh, he's got this. I'm gonna take a seat. <laughs> So I had slapped the gob or whatever it is. What, what should I be referring to these creatures as? Uh, you can refer to them as gremlins. Gremlins. So I slapped the gremlin um, awake. It's uh, tied up. The gremlin does wake up screaming. It's like, no, no, hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. Put my hand I'm over sorry. its mouth. <laughs> Listen, who's your boss? I need to know if it's Caius really quick, so. <laughs> <laughs> Don't scream. I let up my hand just a little bit to see if he screams or not. Ah! Help me! He's a man! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cover his mouth again. So, all right. So clearly you're not going to talk, so just kill you then, right? Okay. So we're going to try this not scream thing again. Lift up the hand. So, you weren't paid to stand out here and ambush us? No! Why were you out here ambushing us? Stuff! Make an insight check. Insight it is. Uh, insight, 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 insight. Yep, there we go. I got a 10. Oh, he seems like a liar. Okay. Um, yeah, what stuff did you get? I don't see any stuff. Well, yeah, we're the first people out here on the road. Yeah, but you must have done this before, right? Yeah, we don't so. keep our stuff here. We keep it, keep it back at home. And who's back at home? The boss that sent you? We're just, we're just a community of, 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 of little guys trying to get by, you know? Oh, yeah? How big a community, huh? See, they only, you I only came up for with children. Really? Little Johnny, he's only this big, but he's going to grow into a big boy. Please don't hurt me. And a cousin, he really needs me to get food. And an old grandpa. Am I familiar with these gremlins at all? Like No, this is the first time you've seen gremlins. Okay. So... I'm going to pick up the gremlin because I'm assuming it's gremlin size. I can just pick it up and... Right? How big is it? Yeah, you can pick it? it up. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll pick it's it up. It's only three feet tall. Yeah, pick up the three-foot gremlin. Um, no, it's probably like I can't. It's like little toes kind of played together. Its hands are like this. You can honestly pick it up by a scruff. Like I said, it's very... They're very furry all around okay. there. And then where there's not fur tends to be the uh, hands... Their so, feet, some of their legs and arms and their heads. Grab its little bow and drag it back to Gaius and be like, hey, we got one that's alive. I'm going to conk the little bastard on the head. God, that's the stuff really Don't stays. Don't kill me. I've got Why a cousin you... and a grandpa and a wife and a child. I had an intact shoulder, you little bastard. <laughs> His name's Billy. <laughs> Your name's going to be Grass. His shoulder's named Billy? <laughs> no, my son. Oh, I thought you were talking about your grandpa. No, my son. My son's name is Billy. Well, then what's your grandpa's name? Daryl. <laughs> well, if you I ever want to see Daryl and Billy again, you better give us some information that we need. Who else have you seen come by here recently in the last few days? How long have you been out here? There was a woman. She was, she was looking for a mister. What mister? I don't know. 
And what'd you do with her when you attacked her? We tied her up. And where'd you put her? Back at home. So she's just sitting there back at home with everybody else? Are you planning on eating her? No. We, we would, no. Yeah. I, can I, can I take the, like, turn around my harpoon and hit it upside the head with the stick? I just want to uh, conk him. Sure, are you trying to conk him back out? No, just conk him and make it make him a little more pissed off. Sure. <laughs> you can conk him pretty easily. He's being held. He's <laughs> restrained, tied up. It's like it's a non-moving target. Yeah, Ellie, like he was trying to lie. It was an obvious lie. He gets conked. His tiny little ears point down a bit. So what's her name, this woman that you've got tied up and being tortured? We didn't ask. And she didn't speak this whole time? She spoke. So you're out here. You're shooting people. You're going to eat them. You're not even bothering to ask or think about this. And then you want us to think about your family. Conk, I have a son named conk, Dowie. Conk, conk, conk. <laughs> Please stop. So... Will your people be willing to sell her back to us? Money. That's yeah, what I just we, said. We would sell her. Okay. So I don't feel like being attacked on the way there. So how many people should no, be No, you expect? give me the money and I'll go back and I'll get her. Yeah, that's not going to work. So tell you what, I, but if you want to live. That sounds like a great plan. I think if you want to live, we'll exchange you and some money for her. We can go back there. Uh, how does that sound to you, Gaius? Mm, and I, I think wink. he deserves a few more bruises on the way back, but, uh, I mean, how many others do you have? There's hundreds. No, oh, well, how see, many then it's people? probably not safe for us. I guess we should just then kill you, I guess. Uh, uh just, just the girl. People. What about how the mister? How many others have you eaten? None. Normally, we just eat the field mice, but she just seemed like an easy target. And you wanted that much food? I mean, that's a heck of a lot of field mice in one person. Yeah. <laughs> and what's the mister she was looking for? I don't know, man. She just kept saying mister. Mista, 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 mista. <laughs> the mista, mista lady. I, I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know anything about nobody. <laughs> yeah, trust me. That's how relationships start, you know? We give some mutual trust, you'll be fine. I don't know. It seems like we found one of your people, but maybe we should just bring back the whole militia. I mean, because he seems to think that there's no way with a hundred of them there, if we walk in, you know, they're going to peasants with pitchforks. That's us. the whole militia pointing at uh, Geisen. He, The little gremlin Geis. says that? Yeah. I'll say uh, he seems to know a lot about you in the village. Wow. So I, I don't know. No, no, no. I just he looks strong and you look strong. I assume that's everybody. I mean, we could bring the whole town over here. I'm sure if everybody grabbed a few little weapons here and there, some torches, pretty sure we could burn you little bastards out. Oh, uh, that's not that's not necessary. Necessary. Well, necessary. Was this necessary? You know what we could do when I asked the little gremlin? I'm like, what's your name? Darius, Billy. I think I scared him so bad he forgot his name. <laughs> you gotta stop slapping him with that harpoon. Are you Billy too? Uh, My name is Fred. Fred. Okay, Fred. Well, here's the deal. So I could just bring you back there, but you've abducted some of their people and they might want to kill or eat you the same as you guys have been doing to their people. So that doesn't work really well. Um, but what if I got you and your family out first? What if we brought the militia there? That way we don't get attacked. But I let you go in there first and get your family out. Would that be something you'd be interested in? Oh my God, I've overdone his brain again. <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you what. We're just going to go I back here to the village of where you abducted some people. Yes, so yes, I I'd love that. I'd love that so much. Well, then you got to help us out. I mean, you know, we're not walking into a trap. Of course not. Why would you be walking into a trap? I never trap anybody. 
anybody. I'm a good guy. I'm a good guy. I could be your good guy. So with hundreds of people there, I think I we could just sit there and walk along. We'll go get the That's villain. Like and we'll just keep a, a, a dagger yeah. to your throat. And that way, if we are attacked, you're the first one to die. That seems pretty good, right, Fred? How about you guys? Does I don't that like that. Fun? I don't like that idea. I don't like it. I don't like it. Let's not do that. I, you know, it's he, weird. He's, he's, you look like gonna, a small fuzzy right, shield. You be, I think he is, actually. People. Guys, can you, like, hold this guy up and use him, like, as a shield? Maybe keep a sword to his throat? Or? Well, actually, I think what you could do is just, like, tie him to my shield here. Uh, can we do that? Can we find a way with this hempen rope to just tie him to the shield that uh, guys can wield him? <laughs> Uh, probably, yeah. All right, let's work on that. Let's do that. All right. Um, you guys get them tied to the shield. Okay. Um, guys, what do you think? Should we go get the rest of the town and go uh, and rescue our person by... That way we're not going there alone. I don't want to bring the old like lady. I can bring you right there. We're really a small group. And, and you know what? We do have a leader. We have a leader, okay? So oh, you do have a leader all of a sudden. We do, we do. We really do. But he's not there. He's not you know, there. He, he told me they didn't have a leader a few minutes ago when town. I asked him. He's in your guys' town. So what's Who his name? It? I don't know his name. I really am just a small folk in the whole grand scheme of things. I don't know. He's some human. I don't know. He's feeling useless again, like target practice. But he said he he said that if, if he didn't show up in a while, that, that we were supposed to wait until the guards came out. We were supposed to take somebody, and we were going to wait until the guard comes, and then we were going to kill the guard. That was our job, you know? And so you figure that somebody you took is the woman? Yeah. We're and just so supposed to hold her until until he gets out. Until he gets out? Out of yeah. what? I don't know. I'm just a small guy. Please. You know, Gaius, well, didn't you tell you me you have somebody? Little... Didn't you tell me? I don't care if the got or the gremlin hears me. So, Gaius, didn't you tell me you have somebody locked up back there? Uh, we do have somebody locked up, yeah. A little, uh, little uh, bit of a ragamuffin uh, stealing from people on the road. Maybe he was a part of a larger group. I was about to say, stealing from people, We've got gremlins here, looking for somebody who's supposed to get out. I think we should go back and have a talk. Would you recognize your boss? Yeah. What's he look like? Describe him first. Uh, human. He's got a nose. What and, color hair? And, uh, it's dark. I don't know. He's really tall. It's hard to see his hair. Most of the time I can just see under his chin. Does he have any scars on his chin? Does he have hair on his chin? What color is his He's skin? He's got some hair on his chin. Stark. I ask him. I start going through pointed questions that will help Gaius identify whether the person being described is the Gaius, person Gaius, you're pretty sure that's Thace. The, it, it's, that's who? Thace, the thief. Oh, yeah, the guy who was in the jail cell? Yep. Okay. So, Gaius, should we go back to town and, like, reveal this and then, like, go on a gremlin hunt? Yeah, I think we should. Uh, I mean... Joffrey's useless, but uh, at least we could take him with us, and he'll at least buff up the numbers a little bit. Do we want to have anybody there while we interrogate this guy that you've got captive? Uh, I Do think you guys so. not I mean... want Dixie anymore? Oh, now you now know, he knows her name. name. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you know, I just thought we were all being honest. So why were you being dishonest then? You guys kind of looked like schmucks. And then I'm gonna just gonna slam the shield on the ground. Once. <laughs> Oops. Why? Oops! My shield just fell off my yeah. arm. Whoops! 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 <laughs> <laughs> You've knocked him back unconscious. All right, I don't think. Oh, which was what I was trying to avoid. Okay, let's not do that. <laughs> we we it's want okay. him He'll for be quiet on the walk back. We're getting the information from him. You know, we're not torturers. Uh, well, I mean, not today anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Not, I mean, not, it's not torture yet until there, there comes serious bodily harm. Well, you know, there is this thing when you start squishing a head and people fall unconscious. I've tended to learn that that actually does sometimes some lasting damage. So <laughs> we want him to identify this other individual. What did you say his name was, guys? Because I haven't heard him say it yet. Face. Face. He's got a face or he's called face? Or... Face. Face. T-H-A-C. -H oh, face. Yeah, sorry, just missed that a little bit. All right, so we're walking back to the town and whatnot. So is there anybody else we want to have in on this conversation or just you and me interrogating things? Because you said that somebody above you was 
out of town or something like that? Well, yeah, Gawson's out of town. Uh, supposedly, uh, I'm, I'm assuming it must have been because of the, the missing persons here or something else that must have been going on. But, uh, I mean, Joffrey's supposed to be watching the guy in the cell, but uh, I'm kind of wondering, you know, if uh, if Thace is in the cell and they're saying he's his boss, I mean, I'm not even sure if that's accurate either. Hold on, I gotta check time. One it's 6.37, or for me. We've yeah. got half an hour. Oh, okay. 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 Cool. Um, well. All right, so um, my goal is just to get back and let Gaius kind of get us together who we need and whatnot. So, Gaius, you're kind of in charge here, buddy. Sure, sure. You guys right, get well, back into the town, you know. At this point, the uh, little gremlin's woken back up again. Uh, he's screaming at the townspeople to help him, but most of the town people seem to be in some level of shock even seeing a creature like this. Uh, they kind of look at Gaius for what to do, and Gaius just, like, waves a dismissive hand. They keep moseying on their way, assuming that you're taking care of the problem. Uh, you get to the town, to the jail cell. You get in, you find Joffrey asleep, and the cage cell is empty. Oh, I knew it. I knew this was going to be the case. That bastard. I'm going to go ahead and just like, I, I don't know. We can throw the gremlin inside there, maybe. I don't know if the gremlin will even fit, though. But I do kind of want to hit Joffrey with the edge of the shield now. <laughs> you smack Joffrey to wake him up. He's like, oh, what, 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 what's going on? What's, what's happening? Damn it, Joffrey, you dingbat. Look at the cage. What about the cage? It's a Oh no! What? He was so fast. Like, man, you missed it. You know, he yeah, uh, he yeah, tied me yeah. up. Yeah, I bet it was awful. I bet a lot of people seem really fast when you're asleep. Am I losing my job? I really, I really can't lose this job. I need the money, you know. Well, you know, I don't think you're really Garson, doing much of a job. You? Are you going to tell look, Garson? Look, 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 look. We're going to take care of this later. You might be able to make it up to me if you go with us to go help out the local harlot in some kind of dank cave somewhere likely, being held by a bunch Dixie. of little green bastards. Dixie. I hold up the shield. Leave. I'm holding up the shield and making him look at the... Oh, the what the hell is that thing? <laughs> Get that out of my face, man. Dixie got captured by a bunch of these little douches. <laughs> What is it? Well, it's apparently something that was working with the bastard that we had inside like, the jail cell. Which I thought that guy worked alone out. or something. I mean, he was all alone when we found him. Well, apparently not. Ah, oh, shit, man. All right, get up. Come on, get your gear well, on. I don't want to fight whatever that is. Well, then you're going to lose your job because uh, you're not doing anything. Come on, man. Did you just cover for me? You're not guarding people. Why You're not you rescuing tell, people. Can, You're not a god. Why did you just tell Garson I came with? Joffrey, fight or no job. Uh, he gets up and he pushes the chair in. Fine, but like, you know, I'm kind of tired. Fight or no job. I'm fighting, I'm fighting. And he goes over and he starts to grab his sword off the wall. It's going to take me a bit to get my armor on. Okay, well, we'll stand right here. Make sure that you get it all nice and tight. Uh, and he just kind of like starts heaving armor on. He's, he's, he's really dragging out the motions. <laughs> uh, but after a half an hour to don armor, he is ready to go. Okay. Uh, in, in the meantime, uh, could I talk to, like, the local doctor and uh, uh, maybe see if I could get this thing pulled out? Yeah, you go over to the local doctor who will patch you up for, let's see here, for poor health. Okay, works for me. Uh, and since that's the case, I guess we're just gonna uh, mosey on out towards the wherever this little gremlin den is. Uh, you don't know where the gremlin den is because you haven't gotten that information out of the gremlin. Well, I assume the little dingo is gonna tell us where to go. Uh, are you asking him? Well, I'm not asking him, I'm telling him. You tell him to tell you where to go, and he says, who are you? Rob, do you, uh, 
You want to have a conversation? I'm just going to hold up the shield. <laughs> <You're> right. <laughs> said right now we're the ones trying to keep you alive. Um, but it appears you can't even identify your boss here with a person we thought is in here. My boss? We're talking to the same gremlin, right? Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm, Sorry. Yeah. I said, yeah, the one that you identified that was here that you said you were supposed to meet. Who am I? And this is the brain damage that I'm talking about. So now he's useless and now we just have to kill him because he... Don't kill me! I have to. You don't even know anything I, anymore. But but I could, I could learn stuff. What could you learn? He starts to give you puppy dog eyes. Puppy gremlin eyes with teeth. Okay. And, you know, yeah. it's not really, it's uh -huh. like, <laughs> and big ears. You know. All right. Well, let's just go out that direction and maybe we can see if we can't. Are we going to get a bunch of, of other people? I thought you said you wanted to bring the village here to hunt hundred of these things, remember? Well, Peasants I with seriously pitchforks? doubt there's a hundred. I don't know. But, I can't ask him because he don't remember anymore. Oh, don't remember. Joffrey sure groans. Like... How long are we just going to stand here? Okay, well, uh, I guess we could try to rally uh, some peasants together and then go raid a place. Who's going to want to raid a place at this time? Joffrey. Job yeah, or fight. Yeah, so... Uh, I just... I'll go ask around town who's got a spare pitchfork, I guess. He walks back. And he ends up coming back with two other people. Okay. And then uh, in the, the tavern, could we have found anybody who was a, a particular fan of Dixie? Uh, yes, you can find a few Dixie fans who are okay. willing to go get her back. All right. Sounds good. A total of... Uh, what? Joffrey found two people, you found three, so five plus the three of you. You got a total of eight people in your party. Well, that's not too bad. It's more than what we had before, and we're not risking the whole town. We shall see. Um, <laughs> uh, I have a healthy respect for peasants with pitchforks. So, all right, let's go find this mob and take care of it. You know, now that we got things and we got torches and we look like the angry mob coming to rescue the uh, hooker. <laughs> who uh, everybody thoroughly enjoys coming to yeah, rescue Dixie. Exactly. Yeah, All right, we, so I, I guess we'll just have to meander back to where the, the, the gremlins were on the road and maybe just try to see if it if it jogs the, the gremlins' memory there or if uh, you know we it, find some tracks. It does not appear to be jogging the gremlins' memory. There are eight of you all out looking. I need everybody to make a percent roll. Uh, percent or perception? Percent. Percent. Okay. Uh, 31. <laughs> what a high number. Well, the interesting thing is usually with percentages, you usually want low unless she flips it around. Uh, I flip it around. Yeah. So you want high. Uh, yeah. So you guys are searching until dusk. Uh, around, you would say, uh, what, probably, <sighs> what you guys would equate to midnight or zero degrees, you hear somebody shout that they found some sort of hole. Okay, well, I guess uh, we'll go check it out. Uh, do we have uh, torches, right? I mean, I'm sure we got some torches in the basic kit. Uh, yeah, but some people have got some torches. Okay. Cool. It does look like you're going to have to crawl through this hole. I asked the goblin or the gremlin if he uh, lives here or if it looks familiar. That looks like a good home. Do you live in holes? I, yeah, I, 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 I think I'd live in a hole. Using the torchlight, I want to see if there's any tracks around that look like his feet or hands. Plenty of tracks around that look like his, uh, just his feet. It's big enough for him to be able to walk through just fine, but uh, you, you tall crawl. people, you gotta crawl. Hmm. So, Joffrey think... first? <laughs> <laughs> he, 
you know, it's it's probably uh, the best option considering he's the one who's always laying down all the time. He's the best at it. Ah, oh, come <laughs> on, man. I do want to give Joffrey good advice before we put him in the hole, which is, Joffrey, remember, you don't want to go slow because slow makes an easy target. So I'm don't... going in there. Sure you are. Heck no, I'm not. You really? guys go in first. You knew the terms when you came out here, so you're going in. Yeah, uh, whether... I'll go in, but I ain't going in first. Well, guys, right. you could lead the way with your shield. Yeah, no. Gaius. Somebody's got to take that. Uh, That's why Garson likes you. Somebody's got to take the little gremlin off my shield. No, you want the shield at the front. Am I going to be scraping his head across the top when I'm, when I'm crawling through there? <laughs> Just uh, took it aside a little he bit. Fits, I say he fits in the circumference of your shield, so he'd be fine. Okay, all right. Well, then I guess it's fine then. I think what I'll do is is that uh, I will try to hold the shield out in front of me uh, with, a, with a torch in the hand and then keep crawling forward with that harpoon so I could be poking at things through the hole. There you go. Sure, sure. Uh, and as you guys are, as Gaius is starting to work on crawling through, I'm going to call it here and say that this is a good cliffhanger to leave off of since we are almost at our time. Wonderful. <laughs> Fair wow. enough. Well, this was great. I want to say thank you. I mean, I, I've had a really good time. Um, so I'll tune in next week to find out what is inside of this hole. And do we want to say any closings? Mm, mostly, I'm glad that everybody, uh, you know, was here to, to watch and join us on this little this little venture. Yeah, um, I'd like to say uh, you're here on Plot Points, and we always have a great time gaming. We had originally planned on bringing over a Cold War in Hell for this time slot. Uh, due to some life events and whatnot, we've chosen, or I have chosen, uh, not to do that. And then I just want to say a big shout out and a thank you to Kitty Doe, who short notice said, you know what? Well, I can run a game, you know, for whether it's a series of two or three or whatnot. We're just waiting to see. But in the meantime, you can see she really took a lot of time to prepare an adventure to expose all of you and us to her world, a world where, you know, we haven't seen gremlins and whatnot. It's just really exciting. Um, it's new, it's different, and I'll tell you what, I'm glad to be here, and I hope all of you as viewers are too. Um, Kitty Doe, do you want to do any shout outs for your stream? Uh, shout out to Gina and Jack Parnell, they run Parnell Animations and Gina's Funky Music. They tend to do a lot of sound design and animations. I know Jack has been thinking about doing an animation for another podcast that I'm in, uh, but in general, just Shout out to the entire Twitch audience. Thank you for being here and supporting us. Indeed. Sweet. You know what? Um, I always say, whatever table you're at, make it the best table possible. Uh, great players don't just happen. They're made over time. So practice that. Make some amazing memories uh, in the games that you play. And make even better friendships, just like you heard all these guys talking about. Um, from all of us here at Plot Points, I do want to say happy gaming. And God bless whatever channel that you're at. I'm going to go over and look at a uh, rating while these two just kind of shoot the proverbial breeze with you. And then we'll uh, log off from there. Just remember um, to forge and compress yourself into the perfect player. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also wanted to award you both 10 plot points for a uh, spot on character today. <laughs> uh, both of you just absolutely oh, okay. amazing. I think we had a lot of great conversations and back and forth here and i really enjoy that nice. yeah and and i'm actually uh, looking forward to the next session too i'd like to see how this uh, how this resolves and i what, hope everybody else would like that too whatever is inside of the hole for all you know this leads down to drow cities who knows yeah, <laughs> drow <laughs> like to <laughs> crawl on their arms and legs through this yeah. so <laughs> Well, no. the drows have a different entrance, you see. Right, we're, right. We're going as deep as Dixie because D Dixie's used to going deep and whatnot. And so uh, <laughs> once we're done there, you know, we'll just get Dixie out, you know, and uh, I don't know. That's and my plan. And she'll be ever so thankful to y'all. However, could she repay ya? Not in the usual she fashion. Has <laughs> always depended upon the kindness of strangers. Especially uh, you guys. She wishes that you would take up her services sometime. <laughs> don't please don't anybody tell her that I have gold. <laughs> <laughs> all right, from all of us at Plot Boys, have a great night. Thank you. Have yeah, a great way. Goodbye. Good night.